and welcome to the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of March 18th. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Hello. For a weekly episode to talk about parenting in a roundabout way, along with a little pop culture. And in your parenting world, it's the saga of the shower that continues. <laughs> it's the saga of the shower. I hope it's over now. Please let it be over. But, you know, as I've discussed here, we had a lot of problems with it. We had uh, a shower door that took a long time to come in and then we had leaking water all over the floor and then everything seemed to be good my daughter was happy she was taking her shower down there she was everything was going great and then she mentioned there's like kind of a crack in the tile and i went down to look and it just looked like maybe some grout had fallen out which is odd because it wasn't done that long ago and Mm -hmm. i would like it to last a little longer but you know keep an eye on it and then she said it's gotten bigger and i went and looked and yeah you could see it really had and the the the, tiles below it were looking a little funky and then there was another area that looked like it was starting to open up Uh, so you know i'm like okay well i'll i'll call the handy man again really not wanting to do it and then that night she saw a spider in the shower and she was convinced that spiders were coming through that crack and she wasn't going to go in the shower again and you know so it's like (laughs) okay so i called the handy man and i said look there's this the the grout seems to be opening up and my daughter thinks spiders are coming through and she won't go in the shower please come so (laughs) they had told us to until the handyman came just put duct tape over that to to put the spider fear at rest okay and when he pulled the duct tape off the tiles came off (laughs) completely came off and the the stuff he had used to stick the tiles to the wall had never dried oh never seen anything like it he had no idea and this was months before the shower was being used so it wasn't right. that we used it too soon it just never dried so he like peeled as many tiles off as it would come off easily and redid them and so everything's fine now but uh let's, oh, you know everybody just just uh can say a little prayer for our shower that it mm-hmm. stays stuck uh it's just the weirdest thing he was just pulling it off and the stuff underneath was all just still still wet and gooey wild i yeah how could that be i don't know right because it i mean when you had the problems with the leak yeah that was when it was actually being used right and uh, yeah so it was like two or three months between when it was tiled and when there was any water going on it at all right so i said is there is there a water problem with that wall you know is there water coming from somewhere and and he said no it's just just didn't dry so Mm. How is that possible? I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, it looks good now. This is fine now. Right. It'll be okay. It's all done. <laughs> no problems. Yay. Of course. Uh-huh. And it's like I was worried about it because the the other side of that wall is her bedroom. And there's an electrical outlet in that wall. And all the cables from the, the uh, cable box and the TV and a computer are all right there. And I'm like, oh, right. my gosh, if any water comes through that wall, we are quite literally toast. So, mm-hmm. um, but it's all fine now. All okay. fine now. No <laughs> problems at all. Everything's fine. No more No more stories here. Nope, nope, nope. We're done. Nope. We're done. Nope. Do you have a story, Catherine? Let's talk about your stories. <laughs> What's going on with you? No, nothing well, to see here. Move along. Yeah. I just, you know, much like you get the like, hey, there's a crack or hey, (laughs) there's a spider. Yes. I just got a text from my daughter that said, do you have work today? (laughs) It was to me and my husband. Do you have work today? And and I said, yeah, you know, and gave her my schedule. And then I waited like. (laughs) Easily 10 minutes. Oh, man. For- Children. <laughs> Children, no. Like, what? What? <laughs> what? Because you're expecting Do- the rest of that to be, I'm in jail, come get me. Yeah. Or, or like, because I have to go to the emergency room and like, I, yeah, I was like, yeah. What, what, are, what is wrong? What is happening? <laughs> and finally she, she responded and just like, okay, I'll call you later. Like <sighs> she just wanted to know what our schedule was so that she knew when would be a good time to call. Oh, young people, young oh. people, you lead with that. Yeah. Hey mom, I want to call you later. When are you going to be around? Mm-hmm. This is how mm-hmm. you do it. Yeah. If you do not wish cardiac arrest on your parents. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It was... It was a fun couple of minutes, you yeah. know, and I'm sitting there like, do I, do I follow up? You know, <laughs> I don't want to freak her out. And also my, it was a group text with my husband and my son. So I don't want to freak him out. Yeah. <sighs> but as I said, it was all fine. It was yeah. fine. Yeah. It's fine. No Everything problem. is fine. No problem at all. <laughs> uh, we a little sit down about texting etiquette. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, at least she wasn't calling to say, hey, me and my friends are in L.A. and our car was just stolen and we just walked five miles to the beach. Can you come get right. us? Our car was stolen along with all of our all money, of our money. Which was we were just uh, stashing <laughs> in the glove compartment. Come on, guys. Again, I say, kids, kids, no. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is Reservation Dogs, if you haven't guessed. Uh <laughs> The final two episodes of season two. Oh, yeah. Which, in which, Alora makes many of the same mistakes she would make the first time she went to California. <laughs> yeah. Sweetie. She does make it further this time. At yes. Least. Take your valuables with you at all times. Yeah. Yep. I. Although, mm-hmm. the first time they couldn't really take the valuables with them since they were fleeing from a creep but still scary but person. still how do they not know do not leave the giant wad of cash in the glove compartment yeah i bet they didn't even lock the doors well no they had because willie jack had to take the keys to oh go that's true out okay and get, all right so at least they locked it every time they stopped and got out of that car i was like leave somebody in the car don't right. don't just leave the car there take your money with you and leave somebody on guard yeah you poor, you poor, beautiful innocents. Right. Oh. <sighs> yes. So we had, we had, um, the first episode though, we should talk yes. about that. We're one talking first. about the second one, which was, I still believe right. uh, road trip to California. But before that was a very, uh, self-contained sort of episode, which did spur the episode after it, but right. it was mostly uh, Willie Jack visiting Daniel's mother in jail. Is that who she was? Did we I, term? I, according to Vulture's uh, review of the episode, okay. it was Daniel's mother. It was never okay. stated, and I wondered, and I thought that at some point somebody would clear it up, but it's not that kind of show. No. So, um, I figured it had to be either his mother or like a sister or something. Yeah some relative of some some sort but yeah. um yes it is not stated i am just taking the vulture critics word for it since i believe it that individual appears to know a lot about the show um right and played by lily gladstone yeah who i had previously seen a day or two before all glammed up for the oscars and That's she right. was the polar opposite of glammed up in this one in her in her prison jail uniform <laughs> yes yeah prison yes so, and just wonderful in the role. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was it was another like you know, interaction with a spirit who's somewhat irreverent. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and apparently do we think she's getting it on with the spirit who talks to bears? Yeah, she was talking about it. I I think she was talking about bears. I think she could do better, guy. but okay. Yes, she's pretty I do cute. Too. <laughs> For sure can do better. By the way, I just need to mention this since we are briefly mentioning the spirit that talks to Bear. The actor who plays him was in Rutherford Falls as I think, remember there was like somebody who was helping her out at the museum who seemed like he was really perfect and smart and exactly what she wanted there. And then he turned out to be a fraud. Yes. Okay. Okay. I do remember that. So I went over to Rutherford Falls for something and um, the IMDb page, and I saw a little clip with him in it. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'd recognize that guy. Right. Of course, dressed normally and without a horse, but I recognize him. <laughs> Dallas Goldtooth, I believe is his name. Yes, that it's a spirit on reservation dogs. And he played Nelson on Rutherford Falls. Oh, yeah. So anyway. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was interesting to see her spirit popping up and talking to her and trying to rally her a little bit. Right. And then the, 
there's a whole scene where Hope D, oh, that's, yeah. um, that's Daniel's mom, uh-huh. um, sort of says a prayer and, and like kind of summons these ancestors yeah. and they're all standing behind Willie Jack and, oh, uh, my gosh. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was very, I mean, you can't like, how long was that scene? Like a minute, two minutes Mm -hmm. in the visiting room at the, at the prison and they're eating all this junk food from the vending machines. (laughs) And, uh, and she just says a few words and I'm like, weeping all over right right yeah that was beautiful it really was interesting and moving scene between the two of them Mm -hmm. and uh it it was prompted by the the kids are in school and they're seniors and so the teacher gives them something they wrote when they were freshmen Right. which is, you know, kind of interesting to see what your freshman self was. But then on the way out, she gives Daniels to Willie Jack. And I'm like, it, really? Right. Really? You're going to lay that on a kid? Seriously, yeah, maybe teacher? give it to his dad. Yeah. <laughs> He's what still are you around. doing? Here, I know you're just like devastated by the death of your friend. Here, read what he wanted to do when he was a freshman. Right. Just to twist the knife a little bit. Right. <sighs> I question <laughs> but it did Just serve its purpose. It did serve its, it purpose, did serve its purpose. Bringing them together. I.e. I mean, give it to somebody's parent and then have the parent give them to the kids, I guess. But right. uh, anyway, that's rough. Yeah. <laughs> but so that prompts Willie Jack to, well, first of all, to go visit his mom. Yeah. Um, and try to give her the letter, which she won't mm-hmm. take. Right. Um, and then to kind of summon everyone else. Yeah. Um, the rest of the res dogs together <laughs> and try to, um, you know, get them to to talk about it. And yeah, to come back together because she to feels come, that come together. Laura yeah. and Bear are still, I mean, they're acting like everything's okay, but it's clearly not. Right. And, uh, they the the is that the episode that started out with them all doing their different things that Alora working in a yeah convenience store and and Bear doing his roofing thing and uh, she's oh, just that, eating breakfast she's just with having his a grandma. good breakfast every morning it's like he got the best deal there <laughs> yep unless he's getting tired of the food I don't know but uh, he's being well fed yes by his fake grandma yes. Um, but they're still not, things aren't the way they used to be. And right. uh, so she's asking for advice on how to bring them back together. And, uh, Hope T gives her some, some pretty wise advice. And, uh, so based on that, they decide to all drive to California. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the thing to do. Take all this money we've earned and uh, what could possibly go wrong? Drive the same right. car, which is, I'm sure, in much better shape than it was the last time. <laughs> right. Uh, but it's also another sweet scene when they it is. when they leave. This is, this, I think we're now into the second episode. Yes, but um, into the second episode. And the whole, I forget the... The, uh, that other gang had a name, the one that Jackie's in. Yeah. But, um, they're all there along with those two twins who ride yes. around on bikes uh-huh. um, to say goodbye. And yes. it's, it's, you can tell that, you know, things are good between them now. And right. Very different be- from the last departure where Laura was sort of sneaking off with Jackie. Right. And leaving everybody upset. Um but uh, even though Jackie helps them get the car back, she knows this is a trip for just those four. Right. And, uh, well. Maybe she'll be the one to come rescue them somehow. Yeah, really? <laughs> no, that's not it. I, I, I know I saw a, um, I saw the one sentence, you know, oh. summary of what happens in the next okay. one. So, All right. Don't share. 
No, I won't. Yeah. <clears throat> but, but it's uh, not Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> but they go to, they, they make it to Los Angeles and mm -hmm. promptly have their car stolen along with all their money. And then um, a, a street person, I assume, but right. they call it white Jesus, uh, leads leads them first to his homeless encampment, and then they from there are able to get to the ocean. Right. And um, I did cry a little bit when they're they're all hugging in the water, and all of a sudden Daniel's there. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Not just a little. <laughs> <laughs> there were many tears. Yes, <laughs> yes, that was that was really well done, mm -hmm. really well done. Yeah, because it was just all of a sudden there he was. Right, right. He just just, just from camera you know, very angles. right tight shot on all yeah. four of them hugging uh -huh. as they're in the water, and then yeah. you realize you slowly realize that he, Daniel's there. Yes, yes. So. that was. Kudos for that. That was really well done mm -hmm. and very moving. And uh, hopefully they will be able to move on at this point once they right. find somebody to rescue them. <laughs> yes, yes. Mom, are you working today? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rita would figure that stuff out. Yes. She's, she is on top of things. Yes. But his dad is in LA, but of course, his numbers, the phone number Bear has for him is disconnected because appropriately. Yeah. He was never going to be good enough to help them. That's for <laughs> he has sure. been disconnected for, from them for quite some time. That is true. Yeah. So, second yeah. season down. Yeah. One to go. And yep, uh, two more episodes of crying through this comedy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I know. What is this thing? I was trying to, I was recommending it to a friend the other day and I was trying to figure out how to describe it. And right. It's like, it's just, it's just different. It's just its own thing. Roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> Still has, you know, some very funny, Yeah. you know, yeah. It, it's always, totally. it's always got the humor, but right. But also they are going to give you other stuff too. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. No matter what. Mm -hmm. It was nice that, uh, that, uh, Kenny let them take the car. <laughs> yeah. He's been changed by his experience in the woods. Apparently. I think he has. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an enjoyable performance by that actor. Yes. So, so let me now move on to <laughs> think weepy in your Catherine celebrity find of the week no now we have a just a, a cute one um this is Aww. a picture book that is called uh -huh. the world's best class plant <laughs> 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 and this is one that i had seen and i was like oh this is this is very sweet i like this and then for some reason didn't you know take note of it or you know write down the title or anything and uh -huh. And then thought about it later. I was like, oh, why didn't I write that down? And, but I'm sure I could find it again. Uh -huh. And then um, before I got a chance to actually search for it, it came past me again. So <laughs> it was meant to be. Um, yeah. A, it is by Liz Garten Scanlon and Audrey Vernick, illustrated by mm -hmm. Lenore Bonti Bontigau, I think is how you say it. Okay. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so obviously it's uh, about a class plant. You know, it starts out with the kids in this classroom, like other, cl everyone else has like a hamster or a, a lizard or a chinchilla or whatever. And our, <laughs> we have a plant. <laughs> and the teacher's like, but plants are wonderful things. And, you know, and then mm -hmm. um, one day they just, the kids decide to name the plants. Ah, and then really. it, then they really, you know, develop a connection with, mm -hmm. with their plant. Um, and, oh. it, and it goes on from there and it's just super cute. So <laughs> As a non, um, I cannot, I cannot care for plants. No, <laughs> like I have, I've done Black very thumb. poorly in that regard. And yes. the thing is, my mom and my sister are like 
magicians. I mean, oh they just gosh. have tons and tons of beautiful. <laughs> I mean, my sister, that's her, that's her career as well. But oh, wow. I mean, she deals more with cut flowers um, in mm-hmm. her, in her work, but in her house, I mean, everywhere. Beautiful. Wow. So, wow. So maybe that's why this book appealed to me. I was like, yeah, sounds like plants are plants can be a, a lovely thing. So, yeah, yeah, it's just a very sweet story. It's cute pictures, you know, like sort of patient, lovely teacher who's <laughs> <laughs> like slowly guiding them to find their way to enjoying their plant. Oh, I believe they named him Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, who's a spider plant. So, okay. It's quite sweet. It's very cute. <laughs> Just looked like a Jerry, didn't I, it? I guess so. Yeah. So that is the world's best class plant. Aww. Check it out. Very sweet. Yeah. I like the cute little children's books. Yeah. You got to mix it up, I know. I know. I try. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of mixing it up, it has now come time for us to tiptoe through our archives, revive a couple of topics, and see where we're at now. So this week, we're going to look at what we were talking about three years ago, four years ago, and six years ago this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, First up is from March 18th of 2021. We talked about the perils of punctuality. And I think the crux of it was, would you rather always be 10 minutes late or 20 minutes early? Right. And I could say I would rather be 20 minutes early. Ain't never going to happen. <laughs> I am always, always late, always have been, always will be. Lately, even when we try to be early, the traffic in our town has gotten just ridiculous. Mm. It's not that big of a town. It's not that small either, but still – one time I had, we had to just like go down one street to get to my doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. And there was so much traffic and so much people driving weirdly and world road construction and this and that it took us a ridiculous Mm -hmm. amount of time. So I always say, it's like, we can get wherever we're going faster than we can get out of our town. So, um, you know, that's what I'm going to blame being late on. Right. Works great because everybody in town knows it. There's always construction someplace. There's, you know, schools letting out. There's this and that. So you go, I say, oh, gosh, the traffic getting here was ridiculous. And they'll go, oh, yes, yes, yes. Right. <laughs> not, not me not getting ready till right when we needed to leave. Right. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, yeah, it's just I have no objection to being early. I just cannot seem to do it. Right. Well, and since we recorded this, I, of course, now have a job that requires me to actually be there on time. (laughs) Not like when you're working at home and you set your own schedule. So I'm pretty good. I'm even late for my own schedule that I set. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I do that too, for sure. Like, I'm going to get up at this time. I'm going to start working at this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll be there just going to watch that video of I'm Just a Can one more time. (laughs) Right. So I've been, I'm mostly, I'm pretty good about leaving early, um, enough to get there on time. And, and the funny thing is that the days I'm the earliest is always the days that I have to get there the earliest, you know, like mm-hmm. when my shifts start, like, luckily they changed it so that we used to have 6am shifts and now those are 7 mm-hmm. ams. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm so like. I streamline everything so that I have very little to do in the morning. You know, it's like throw my clothes mm-hmm. on, throw my contacts in, like yeah, run out the door. So then I get there <laughs> like 10 minutes early and <laughs> that's not good, but it's better than being late, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it, yeah. So, I mean, that's sort of my current relationship with uh mm-hmm. timeliness <laughs> so, yeah uh, uh i'm i'm doing pretty well but we i also have like it, there's not a super simple way to get there from uh-huh. my house and now there's various roads closed and 
it does throw me off my game when I have to. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess they're doing that for good reasons, but they didn't ask permission first. No, they sure didn't. <laughs> and we have this whole thing where, you know, we have at work, we have shared like stations that we use. Mm -hmm. And so, and you're before you, when your shift is over, you are supposed to log out from everything and then wipe down the whole station. Oh, geez. you know, <laughs> and it, you know, people are always generally coming, you know, three to five minutes before their shift starts. So okay. then when your shift is ending, it's like, well, do I stop early uh, or, you know, there's always this awkward, like turnover moment. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So, cause I don't, I, I feel guilty if I, if I sign out before, <laughs> before the time. <laughs> <laughs> so and then they're like yeah. standing there waiting and and you know when it's my turn i'm doing the same thing just standing right. standing there waiting right. for them to clean off their stations so that i can start so. <laughs> usually you raise a kid who's either exactly like you or in reaction to you yeah my daughter is ridiculously early for things she leaves super early mm -hmm. she 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 works like 15 minutes away and she'll leave a half an hour before her shift. Right. Uh, and she go has a, she has a standing doctor's appointment and she like leaves like an hour before. Cause it takes a little while to get there. And sometimes if they change the route as we, you know, yeah. roads are closed. She wants to make sure she gets there on time. Right. And this one time we were, she had hit her head and so we had gone to the urgent care and it looked like she was not going to be able to leave at her usual time and then it looked like she was not going to be able to leave on time to get there at all mm -hmm. uh, so wonder of the modern age i said text your doctor if you could just zoom it and sure enough they could so she made it on time there because we could get home in time we just couldn't get the 30 or 40 minutes to get to the appointment mm -hmm. on time. Right. So that, uh, that is a rescue. If, if that was available to more people, although then we'd be late getting to the computer, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that might be nice. Like if you could, you know, when you have to go to the doctor's office, you're going to have a half an hour wait at the doctor's office. You just check in online and then mosey your way on in there. That'd be great. Right. Well, I think That's when we it. were talking about this three years ago, we were mm -hmm. talking about when you have those uh, uh those virtual doctor's appointments and yeah. and you're <laughs> you're in the virtual waiting room and <laughs> yeah. um or or business meetings and you're like i don't want to be like sitting there and they see i'm sitting there right for a long time but right. at the same time you don't want to come burst in late maybe you do maybe i do yeah well and i'm so busy working for you that i just couldn't i just all of, you know all of a sudden i realized right the time. well and my <laughs> for my non-library work um i missed or meetings or they would you know email me like are you coming to this meeting and because <laughs> on gmail like once you get an invitation and then you mm -hmm. say yes you're going the email uh -huh. disappears <gasps> So, you oh my goodness, to, like I've figured out I have to have the calendar like, at, like call wow. them up in Gmail. Otherwise I will, cause I can put it on a calendar, but <laughs> yeah, you know. I did not know that. I know, I guess I never, I guess I never RSVP. I just say, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. It that just day. goes so away. I want to come to your stupid meeting. This is same thing in Outlook. So Jeez. luckily I don't have very many meetings and in, in outlook but um <laughs> but see like i just clicked it open yep i have one on monday which i would have mm -hmm. fully forgotten about if i didn't <laughs> if i didn't um just look oh, at that dear. column so anyway uh, <sighs> it should put it should at least put it on your google calendar it probably it well it does but if you don't but you don't look at if that. i don't if i don't have it like up uh, as a uh, column on the side of my Gmail, then I'm ne right. never going to see it. Right. So I now have that column up and it says showing events until September 12th, 2024. <laughs> and there are none. 
And do you look at that and say, oh my gosh, my life is so empty. I have to find things to do. Or do you say, oh yeah. I say, oh yeah, that's, that's good. That's... Even though it's false because you don't have all your stuff in there. Right, right. It's only for that particular, that particular thing. No meetings, yes. <laughs> So, well, I guess that means that uh, we followed our advice and not our passion <laughs> right. in finding work to do, <laughs> which yes. was our topic on in 2020. Yeah. As to whether, uh, you know, that we see job advice telling kids to follow their passion, but there's a downside to that. And number one, if your passion is your work, sometimes it stops becoming your passion. Right. And that maybe you find something to do and then do your passion on the side uh -huh. might be better. Um, which, I mean, I sort of went into the thing that I creatively enjoy doing. Right. So, but it does make it a chore. Definitely. There's been times when I had, uh, when I just quit a creative job and like got to work as a secretary just so that I could then go home and write. Right. Um, but that has, that was a long time ago. I do think of it again, though, now I do think, I do think about, could I just like go work in an Amazon warehouse during the day and then come home and write my blog or write a book or something? Uh -huh. but I'm too old for that now. <laughs> yeah. I don't want extremely short, brittle boned old ones. <laughs> in the Amazon Back in warehouse. Boxes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would fall and it would be a workman's comp nightmare. Uh -huh. So they don't want the paperwork. Uh, <laughs> yep. So I'm stuck with, I'm stuck with working on my passion. Dang it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, it's one of those things that always bothers me because it's, it's just not realistic. I mean, like I say this as the parent of someone who's trying to get a degree as and become a playwright, <laughs> but um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, but yes to him, you know, there's just, there's only so many people in the world who can, yeah make money as a basketball player or a, yeah. an actor or, or even, you know, like if, if your passion is like knitting or, just, yeah. you know, some other, it's just hard to make a living. <laughs> it's yes. Kind of creative yes. pursuits. And I don't think it's fair to just, you know, imply that if you would just follow your passion, everything falls into place. Like, right. It's just not right. That's just and you know, my career did start with writing and now it's proofreading, which is that really my passion? Right. I don't know. I am sort of passionate about certain, certain elements of grammar being incorrect. Right. But, uh, <laughs> nobody else so much is. I, is this the episode we talked about work life balance? Why do kids, these days are so passionate about work-life balance. No, it is not. But I do remember when we talked about that. Because I didn't think about it much then because I didn't have anything to say about it, I don't think. But I was in a meeting where they were basically saying, we've decided not to make a lot of, not to correct a lot of these errors because it takes too much time. And this is what we do for our work-life balance. <laughs> No, okay. like, that's not how well, work-life balance you realize works. that when you were talking, when you were talking to freelancers who are paid by the hour, work-life balance has kind of a different rate. Yeah. Um, but also, what? Right. No, that's not how that works <laughs> at all. I, I remember when it was like, you have to catch every single mistake, stay till midnight if you have to. Yeah. Take it home with you and do it at home, but find every mistake. And now it's like, Nobody cares about this stuff. You know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <sighs> Kids today. Yeah. Well, these aren't even that kiddish, these people, but it's like, it's a thing now. Work-life balance. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I, that wasn't taught when I was a kid. <laughs> I have one, one coworker who does, you know, in my same role, who's, I mean, there's several of them that are younger that are like, you know, in their 20s. Yeah. And one out of three just like randomly doesn't come to work, you know, <laughs> just, you know, we just get a message from the supervisor like so-and-so won't be in today. Um, and I'm like, is this person just sickly or <laughs> they just don't just feel like feeling it. it today. It just seems to me like they don't feel like it. So, 
Yeah. And the rest of us are just like, how do you, uh, what, what? <laughs> You know, it's don't just, you have a problem with your money bill balance when that happens? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of work life balance, <clears throat> bank balance <laughs> is a thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. So hmm. kids today. Yep. Yep. People younger than us today, really. It's not even kids. It's the next generation down. Right. <laughs> or a, a generation or two. Yeah. Maybe down. Yes. And good for them, I guess. Yeah. But it drives me bleeping crazy because stuff's still wrong yeah yeah and also not correct <laughs> it's just that example makes no sense to me i mean that doesn't change your work life bow <laughs> well it's i just think the thing is if a proofreader finds stuff then it needs to be corrected and then it needs to be looked at again and sometimes it is the case where when fixing one problem you insert another error mm -hmm. and so then it has to be looked at again and then if there's a problem again it has to go back and has and so sometimes i understand this the the impulse to say and eh, nobody's going to notice that right but i noticed it yeah and if i noticed it i want to fix it yeah so uh, i they they underestimate the number of judgy old ladies who are going look at this uh -huh. That comma's not in the right place. Yeah. Should be a period there. Right. That period should be black, not pink. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know. Are you I'm feeling glad, rejected, you know, Terry, when that happens? I am feeling rejected. I am feeling, I'm feeling like the work I do is not valued. Yeah. Nobody cares about that. Right. I care. And you're like, you're paying me to care. Yes, but you're paying me less because you want me to care less. Right. It's like, <laughs> don't bother looking for that translates to me as work fewer hours. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your life. Work fewer hours. Right. Get less money. Right. Said by salaried people who get the same amount of money no matter how yeah. many hours they work. Right. But I'm fine. I don't resent it. It's fine. <laughs> I am at your service. Tell me what to do. Right. Uh, yeah. So rejection. We were talking about kids facing rejection. Yeah. yeah. And that was before I went through the college, college process. I think we were maybe talking about it with other people's college processes, but. Um, yeah. And also jobs. Right. I a job thing with my kids at that time. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking about this a little bit more lately because more and more colleges are going back to standardized tests. You know, they had made a lot of places were test optional. And on the one hand, I'm glad it's all over and I'm not dealing with that anymore. Yeah. But at least in my son's case, there were a few times where it actually would have helped him. Um, yeah. If they would have, because like there was one, at least one school where they said it was optional, but then they just didn't look at it. And the year before uh -huh. it would have, he would have gotten in. Because yeah. the year before they had like a, you had to have this GPA or that test score, you know, it was one of those uh, and they didn't. Yeah. And then this, the following year, it was like GPA only. I'm yeah. Like, but, but, but look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was tough. Yeah. And, and also for him, you know he was applying to all these theater programs. So he had, Oh yeah. He had academic applications and then he had artistic mm -hmm. applications and they had to line up. Yeah. <laughs> he had to get both. And uh, that was hard. That was hard. And, you know, getting rejected based on your grades, you can just say, well, that's not me. I, my art is me. But then if you get rejected based on your art, mm -hmm. yikes. And yet if this is the field that he wishes to be going into, might as well get used to it. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> you Unfortunately. A road loaded with rejections, my friend. Yes, yes, you did. Develop your develop your muscles for dealing with that. Right. I.e. Mm. My kids have chosen a road that shouldn't involve that so much, but I mean they're both they both have jobs now and so it's fine. But starting to have one of these things with my daughter's job where they just cut her hours all the time. Mm-hmm. Last time this happened, 
it got cut to such a ridiculous degree that, you know, she finally got the message and looked for something else. I feel like people don't want to fire her because it would be mean. And so they just keep cutting her hours to such a point that she will get the picture and go someplace else, right? which worked for that other place. And I feel like it's starting to happen her current job now too. And it's come on people, right? If something makes you feel bad to do it, then don't do it. Find a way to not have to do it. Mm -hmm. But she has also been looking a little bit around for other jobs. So that's, you know, maybe she can find something else, but then that also involves rejection. Yeah. So we may be going for another round of that. Mm. Good times. <laughs> Yay! I keep hoping that there will be a place that will just be her place. Yeah. And she will be very happy with it. And, uh, you know, uh, thought this place she was now might be it, but starting to look like not. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with people? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> but, uh, and then, you know, every now and then I think, you know what, I should get me a full-time job or I should get some additional freelance work and I should do this or that. And then never hear anything back. So that's its own form of rejection. Yeah. It's like not even in most cases warranting a, hey, we've decided to go in a different direction. Right. But, um, just you send the resume out into the world and it never comes back. Yes, we have experience yeah, with that yeah. at this household for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I don't need it. It's not an emergency. It's just a, this might be nice to, to switch gears a little bit. Yeah. But still, I used to, my, I always used to pride myself on being able to get work. Yeah. That was something I could always do. And now, oh, no, mm -hmm. nobody wants me. So, well, it's also that the industry, the business, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I'm not saying that's, that's all of it, but that's yeah. some of it for sure. That is some of it. Yes. And I, I mean, it is a young person's game too. Yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the editorial stuff they don't want. <laughs> Obviously they don't want people who have opinions about things. They want people who go, right. less work. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I, our grandma? She's going to make you fix the comma. Mm -hmm. She has feelings about commas. <laughs> Gosh. Goodness, I remember no. in my younger years, in the Wild West days of the internet, the <laughs> copy editing email group I was on where there were flame wars over the Oxford comma, mm -hmm. man. You don't want those people working for you if you're going to say, eh. Right. <sighs> Just a comma. Right. Well, I believe in commas. The old ways are, <laughs> the old ways are fading. <laughs> the youth have no, no interest in the old ways. Yep. <sighs> we're being put out to pasture. Oh, dear. Well, we're going to put this episode out to pasture for today. <laughs> Sorry <Yes>. to say. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There it goes. It's time. It's time. That <laughs> is going to be it for the Parenting Roundabout Weekly Roundup. Next week, we, since we're at the end of a season of Reservation Dogs, uh, we are going to take a break. <laughs> and for some just straight up goofy silliness. Yes. With yes. The next season of Girls 5 Eva, which has <laughs> recently dropped on Netflix. It is season three, and there are just six episodes, so we're just going to okay. watch them all this yeah, coming week like popcorn. and report back on those. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we will return uh, yes. thus fortified to Reservation <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pretend that there was some time in between those seasons for us, and we're not watching it way late that's right i mean like we would have had to do if we were right watching it right um but uh, when it came out so so yeah pretty sure there will be more laughs than tears on girls five ever yes and it has as I, I think i said this but it has moved from peacock to netflix so oh we'll see okay we'll see how it's changed yeah yes and <sighs> want to support netflix for doing that so we shall just go Chow them all down. That's right. So you can find all our episodes on many places, not on Netflix, but on Spreaker, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or just wherever you get your podcasts. We're probably there. 
And yep. then you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. You can also talk to us on our Facebook page, on Instagram, or on Twitter, where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat. And you can visit our Amazon shop at amazon.com slash shop slash mamatude, where you can find links to a lot of the things we've talked about over the years. We will see you back here next Tuesday. Bye, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Bye, everyone. Bye.